How's it going, everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. And wow, what a few days it has been and not really any good days. Now, most of you have probably already seen other YouTubers' reviews of the new 11900K from Intel. And unfortunately, we couldn't bring out our review specifically on the release time because we ran into just a bunch, a bunch of issues. First, we had a dead 10900K that we couldn't benchmark, which we actually really wanted to. Secondly, we did have some results that just looked like it shouldn't be true, but in the end, it actually was a true. Uh, and that was also to do with some of our motherboards just not properly doing some of the stuff. And then also we did run into quite a bit of issues trying to get a stable over a clock on our 10900K because that's what you do on an on a K CPU, which in the end also didn't even really matter for us because a lot of other reviewers didn't even overclock their CPUs, which it's a bit confusing to me, but that's also one where I want to ask you guys, uh, if you buy an overclock, a, C a K CPU, do you actually overclock it? Because apparently not a lot of people actually do that. So I want to hear from you guys. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you overclock your CPU, even if it's just for most of the time or just a, a tiny bit, just let me know down there because it's just been a bit confusing to me because otherwise, why? by the CPU. But anyway, with the launch of the new 11th generation Intel CPUs, it has been quite of a rocky start. So firstly, the CPUs was actually on sale before the reviews uh, embargo lifted, which I wonder why that is. Possibly because Intel wanted people to buy it beforehand, before actually showing how it performed. That's honestly the only reason I can think of. Now, pricing for the newest CPUs have slightly increased over the previous generation also. Uh, so you actually get also a bit less for more. It kind of sounds like a bit more of an Apple move to me. But anyways, in the new 11900K retails for around $614. So if you can find a stock as they are already kind of sold out a lot of places. But now, so actually what's new on these new Intel 11th generation CPUs? Well, honestly, not really that much. And from some of the other reviewers that we have seen, the only CPU that really makes a bit more sense to get is the i5 11600K from all of the ones that we've seen so far. The 11900K we have actually has less cores than the 10900K and also compared to the 9900K which we're going to compare it to it's pretty much almost the same or it's more of a, a binned i7 11700K because it has pretty much the exact same specs. Now you also get a two new memory settings being a gear one and also gear two. So then a gear two settings downshifts the memory controller so that it operates at half the frequency of the memory. This setting does a trade higher memory latency that does reduce performance in a single threaded workloads, but it does improve a bandwidth which can benefit a narrow selection of a multi threaded workloads. Only the i9 11900K and the F does run at a gear of 1 or 3200 megahertz as a default. All of the other CPUs does run at 3200 megahertz on a gear 2, meaning that the data transfer rate of the RAM for the CPUs will only be at 800 megahertz instead of the 1600 megahertz. Also, using a gear of one on other CPUs is considered overclocking and that will avoid your warranty, but that's also the case for all of the years that we have used XMP. But now if you want to get a bit more detail on Gear 1 and Gear 2, definitely go check out a Gamers Nexus video on that where they do go in a bit more uh, in depth on Gear 1 and Gear 2 and also show the performance differences between the two. So for today, we are going to compare the 11900K to its older brother, older brother, the 9900K. But like I mentioned before, we wanted to compare it to the 10900K, but lo and behold, our luck, we got a dead 900K. So unfortunately, we couldn't compare it to that because that would have been a bit interesting. And a lot of other reviewers didn't also compare it for some unknown reason. And unfortunately also we don't have any Ryzen CPUs to compare it to, but yeah. 
that's unfortunately where we're at. All right, so with all of that out of the way, getting into a bit more of the benchmarks, for our setup, we did use the Gigabyte Aorus Z590 monster motherboard for all of our testing. Also, you can check our video on the Z590 Aorus monster. link in the video description for all more details on the board on its own. Now, like I mentioned before, we really did struggle to get a, a good overclock on our CPU. We tried pushing it up for a 5.3 gigahertz, thinking that would actually be a nice overclock for the CPU because it, again, has two lesser cores than the previous version, but to no avail. Now, on one of our boards, we were able to get a overclock on it, but it kept switching the cores back to 4.7 and gigahertz for some reason, even though all of the settings were set, voltages, overclocks, everything just Verted back to 4.7 gigahertz and it didn't want to apply. But then finally, on our Z590 or a Samosa board, we were able to get a 5 gigahertz over a clock, which did run a stable. We, however, also was managed to get a 5.1 gigahertz overclock, but for some reason, also the scores were lower. So, still something not going perfectly there. Not sure if it was the CPU or the motherboard or firmware. It could have just been a whole bunch of things because nobody else was able to actually get a good overclock on their 10 uh, 11 900 k anyway again now we were able to see that one or two other reviewers was able to get up to 5.2 gigahertz so there is a definitely some more uh, performance to get out of the cpu but they didn't go into detail actually how much voltage and on all of that they actually added towards the cpu to get that overclock most likely there's going to be a video dedicated for this coming from somebody else. So we'll also just wait for that. Now, also we did use a 32 gigs of memory at 4,000 megahertz on a gear one, and then also the Gigabyte RTX 3080 Vision. All right, so just before we get into the benchmarks, the CPU was on a standard non-overclock, and then also we did add our five gigahertz overclock as well to show just how it performs uh, up against the 9900K. First up, a Siege. So the 11900K, it didn't do too well against its two-year-old sibling here. On a stock, it was only a 4% difference between the old and the new, and the results were the same for the OSC on both CPUs. Not a great start for the new 11th generation i9 CPU. Now, we did also use the AI benchmarks on a Civilization 6 as well. The results were basically the same for both CPUs. Only real difference was with both CPUs on a stock. The 11900K took 7 seconds per turn, and the 9900K was 7.3 seconds. Far Cry New Dawn was the first game we really saw a difference between the two CPUs, but it was also marginally. With a stock settings, the 11900K was 8% faster than the 9900K, and both on OC, it was a 13% of a difference. With Assassin's Creed Valhalla, there was little to no difference at all here are basically coming down to margin of error. With our OSC applied, there were, was only around a one frame increase from the stock settings. Ryzen Zero Dawn was also very close with the 1100K on a stock tied with the 9900K on OSC. And we did uh, saw an increase of 5% from a stock on the 1100K to the 5 gigahertz overclock. But uh, getting into some uh, non-gaming related uh, benchmarks, after starting off with a Cinebench R23, we did uh, took some cores off of uh, Tom's hardware's actual post, uh, just for comparison towards RTS as well, just have a bit uh, more uh, CPUs here for you guys. So here we can uh, see uh, more or less uh, what uh, some of the other CPUs uh, scored against the 11900K. We know it won't exactly be accurate as they did use other uh, testing systems compared to ours, uh, but it's just to show you guys a bit of a difference uh, here. So for our personal uh, CPUs, we did uh, see that the 11900K managed to beat the 9900K with a whopping 41% on the multi-core test. On single core, the difference was almost the same with a 40% difference. Both with their OCs applied, we got a 30% difference. And because our OC was set to 5GHz on all cores, the 
single course didn't boost to 5.3 gigahertz so it did score a bit lower than the stock settings then next up for a blinger we did run a classroom with a stock setting it took the 1100k 483 seconds and the 1900k 557 seconds that's about a 15 percent faster with the oc applied the 1100k ran even further away taking only 414 seconds against the 900k's of 503 seconds with a gap of 21 percent for gooseberry the results are for the 1100k were 1141 seconds on a stock and 930 seconds with our OC. That's roughly around 9% faster than the 9900K. With the OC applied, the improvements on the 1100K from a stock was quite a big as well, with a total of 23%. The strangely named Corona benchmark. Now, on a stock settings, the 1100K took 93 seconds. With our overclocks, the 1100K took only 85 seconds. That's around 11% faster. Then next up was Adobe Premiere. So we did it, took one of our previous project files that roughly uh, was around 14 minutes long. On stock settings, the 11900K took 719 seconds. If the OC applied, the 11900K took 607 seconds. That's around 16% faster than the 19900K. And with the OC applied, around 18% faster compared to the stock settings. Now as for thermal, and a power usage uh, from all of our tests we did see a max power draw of around 240 watts from the cpu with our overclock applied we did pair it up with our corsair h115i uh, uh, cooler and we the max temperatures that we saw was around 92 degrees celsius on either 60 or 4 but on most of the cases it hovered around 62 degrees and on idle around 35 degrees so then is the 11 900 k actually worth upgrading from uh, the 10900k and you probably already guessed it definitely not not even if you do have a 19900k if i'm really being honest here the only real reason to upgrade is if you want to get a pc express Four. and that is honestly if you really need it because most gamers don't really need it so i will say that i really think if Intel can do this, that the next 12th generation CPU from Intel might be actually a good CPU to get. Of course, we will have to wait and see for the all of the leaked benchmarks and everything. But so far from all of the rumors, uh, it looks to feature DDR5 as well as PCI Express R5. Apparently, we'll still see, uh, but that could be a nice uh, jumping performance and finally move towards uh, the, uh, the 10 nanometer uh, chips from Intel, which I can finally hopefully do now. But yeah, again, we'll have to wait and see. Can't say anything for certain. But then for content creators, it didn't perform too bad, but it also wasn't necessarily the best, considering also the price tag of $600, uh, where you can get some Ryzen CPUs that might up, <laughs> that will outperform it, uh, depending on the application that you use. But for gaming, I would honestly say rather get the i5 11600k you'll be able to overclock that if you want to get a bit more horsepower out and then it only costs 260 dollars half the price of the 1100k but now that's pretty much it for my look at the new intel flagship i9 11900k definitely a bit disappointed here now i didn't expect too much honestly i again like i mentioned kind of waiting for the 12th generation to come out hopefully again that's good and it can put a bit more pressure on amd to develop to develop also better cpus even better cpus and in the end it's just us consumer is going to be the, the, the victor here with all of the options but yeah the new one the new flagship from intel definitely not worth it but you can get the i7 which looks are pretty decent from some of the benchmarks that we've seen um, and then also the i5 especially does look pretty good so you do have options that you can go for but yeah that's pretty much it for my review of the 11900k what a few days it has been and not the best but anyway yeah if you guys enjoyed this review please like share subscribe and comment like always again let me know down in the comments below if you are gonna get 
this CPU or any other new 11th generation CPUs. What's your thought on it? And if you actually do overclock your K CPUs, I'd actually really want to know. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching guys. And I will check all of you next time. Cheers guys.